हेलो एवरीवन आई एम विजय काटबे एंड वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल इन प्रीवियस वीडियो वी अंडरस्टूड द अजोर डेटाब्रिक्स क्लस्टर कॉन्फ़िगरेशन नाउ इन दिस वीडियो फर्स्ट वी विल क्रिएट द डेटाब्रिक्स क्लस्टर आफ्टर दैट वी विल एक्सप्लोर द क्लस्टर ऑप्शंस एंड देन वी विल अंडरस्टैंड हाउ टू एडिट द क्लस्टर सेटिंग्स एंड एट द एंड वी विल सी हाउ टू डिलीट द डेटाब्रिक्स क्लस्टर सो हियर आई एम ऑन द अजोर पोर्टल गो टू अजोर डेटाब्रिक्स सर्विस This is the workspace we have created earlier. Databricks-ws launch the workspace. Then go to compute. Here we are on the Azure Databricks workspace, and from here we can create the compute. In previous video we discussed there are two cluster types in Azure Databricks: all-purpose compute and job compute. So here we are creating the all-purpose compute. Only all-purpose compute can be created manually. The job compute is not created manually. It is created when a job is created. Create compute. First, we have to specify the name. Let us call it cluster underscore zero one. So this will be the name of our cluster. Then we have to specify the policy. Here we have four options: unrestricted, personal compute, power user compute. and legacy shared compute we will go with the unrestricted as we discussed earlier a compute policy defines the limits on attributes available during the compute creation we can select multi node cluster or single node cluster for the multi node cluster you can specify workers and drivers you can specify minimum workers and maximum workers you can select same node for the worker and driver or you can select the different for the driver type but here we will go with the single node cluster we want to save the cost now note down the cost here for the multi node cluster 6 to 18 dbu per hour let us select the single node cluster now the cost is reduced it is 2 dbu per hour then the access mode For the access mode, we have these three options: single user, shared, and no isolation shared. We will go with the single user. Single user access. We already discussed this in previous video. So till now, we have selected the policy, single node cluster, and the access mode as single user. Now we have to specify the performance. Under the performance, first we have to select the DataBricks runtime version. Here we have to select the image that will be used to create the cluster. Let us select the image. Here we have two options: standard and machine learning. As of now, we don't have machine learning workloads, so we will go with the standard. And here I'll select the latest version with the LTS, that is long-term support. Here we will get Scala version 2.12 and Spark version 3.5.0. So let us select this one. Use photon acceleration. Now note down the cost here: two dBU per hour. After deselecting the photon acceleration, cost is reduced. Now we have to select the node type. Now note down the cost again: one dBU per hour. We will select the cheapest node: standard DS3 V2. 14 GB memory and 4 cores. Now the cost is reduced again, 0.75 dBU per hour. So we have selected the node type here. Let us reduce the termination time. I'll specify 30 minutes. After that, we have to specify the tags. As of now, we don't need to specify the same. And these are the automatically added tags. vendor databricks creator this is me the cluster name the name that we specified cluster underscore 01 cluster id it will generate after the creation of cluster resource class single node after the tags we have advanced options as of now there is no need to specify anything here under the advanced options 
so this is the summary we are creating the cluster with one driver 14 gb memory and four cores and this is the runtime selected and we are going with this node standard ds3 v2 and this is the cost 0.75 dbu per hour to create the cluster we specified all these details let us revise the details first we specified the policy as unrestricted then we selected the single node cluster access mode is single user then we specified the run time we selected the standard with 15.4 lts we deselected the photon acceleration then we selected the node type standard ds3 v2 and after that we specified the termination time 30 minutes all looks good let us create the cluster create compute cluster is creating here finding instances for new nodes acquiring more instances if necessary so the cluster is under creation click on compute you can see the state here it is creating now the cluster name that we specified run time that we specified the cost and the source of cluster creation user interface this is the creator and here we have other options clone delete and enter permissions we will explore all these options as cluster is created now it will take few minutes to create the databricks cluster so i'll fast forward the process so the cluster is created successfully you can see here state cluster is running state let us explore the cluster here we can see all the details that we specified policy single node cluster access mode the run time version node type and terminate after under the cluster we have other tabs as well first one is the notebooks here you will get all the notebooks that are attached to the compute as of now no notebooks are attached to this compute from here you can see the libraries as of now no installed libraries here please install new libraries with install new from here you can install the libraries then event logs you can see the events creating the cluster here you will get the summary of the event as well as the json file then running and driver is healthy so these are the logs you can see the timings as well then the spark user interface here you can see the spark jobs user is root started at total up time is 18 minutes and scheduling mode is fair here you can see the driver logs this is the standard output and the standard error the log 4j output and these are the driver logs standard output against standard output the standard error log 4j output standard error and the same from here you can auto fetch the logs then the matrices here you can see the cpu utilization the server load distribution it shows the cpu utilization over the past minute for each node as of now there is no load here because we haven't attached this cluster to notebook or other things the cpu utilization you can see here memory utilization memory swap utilization free file system space revised through network transmitted through network and number of active nodes 1 so these are the matrices then the applications web terminal the web terminal provides a bash terminal running in the driver node r studio server it will be deprecated in future databricks runtime releases 
Spark Compute User Interface hyphen master. Here we can see event timeline as well. So these are the all tabs that we explored under the cluster. From here you can terminate the cluster. Let us see the more options. From here we can view the JSON, view the permissions. We can clone the cluster. We can restart the cluster and we can delete the same. From here we can edit the cluster. For example, we can change the termination time. Let us specify 60 here. Confirm and restart. After doing any change here in the cluster configuration, you have to restart the cluster. As of now, there is no need to restart the cluster. So we have successfully created and explored the Azure Databricks cluster. Let us delete the same. I'll create the new one when required. Delete. Are you sure you want to delete cluster 01? Yes. And delete. The compute will be removed from this list after it has terminated and its configuration has been removed. So we have successfully deleted the cluster that we have created.